All right, in this section, we're gonna start talking about a section from your textbook, section 2.5 from your textbook. If you are the type that learns well out of a textbook, you should feel free to open up the text and read through this section. I'll follow it fairly closely in this video, um, but don't feel obligated to do this at all. I won't ever test you out of anything that I don't explicitly talk about in these videos that I'm making. At any rate, we're gonna talk about 2.5, which is dealing with limits, specifically limits that involve infinity. And what I'm getting at with this notation here is, we're in this kind of large subsection called limits. And then within this subsection, we're talking about limits involving infinity. And the next video will still be inside this large subsection limits, but uh, we'll be talking about something else, not limits involving infinity, but this rule called L'Hopital's rule. At any rate, this is just meant to give you kind of an idea of where we are in the course. Uh, if you watched the last video, you know that I kind of think about this course as having four different blocks, subsections, whatever you want to call them. First, we talk about limits, and then we get into the integral algebraically, this line there accidentally, apparently. Um, and then we learn some rules for the integral, and then finally some applications with the integral. At any rate, we're in the first of those things, limits, and we're in section 2.5 of our book, where we talk about limits involving infinity. And what you'll see is within this 2.5, there's kind of two different topics that we want to talk about. And the first of those two different topics, kind of informally speaking, is when the answer is infinity. And I'll put that in quotes because the answer is not always exactly infinity, but I think when I finish talking about this, uh, you'll understand what I mean. This is what this video will talk about, and then in the next video, I'll do the other topic of section 2.5. Anyways, answer is infinity. What am I talking about? Um, maybe I can remind you of a Math 251 question. And I won't do this the entire term. Everything I teach you in 252 won't have a 251 analog but maybe that's an easier way to start out the class. So here's a Matthew 51 question. Maybe this looks familiar. This question would arise if you were using the definition of the derivative to find the slope of the tangent line of the curve y equals x squared at the point where x equals three. And really you'd have to figure out the limit as x approaches three from the positive side and the negative side and make sure that they agree. So this would be one of the two steps in figuring out the slope of that tangent line. All right, maybe you remember all this stuff, maybe you don't. Either way, you did problems that looked a lot like this in Math 251. And the idea here is what this notation is telling you is the value of x is getting really, really close to three. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than three or more specifically, it's approaching three from the positive side. So in your head, maybe you're thinking 3.00001, but it's not really a number different than three. This is more a concept. It's a number getting close to three from that direction. At any rate, if all of the x's have that behavior that they're getting really, really close to three, what I wanna figure out is what happens to this expression. And naively, you might be like, well, if this x is really, really close to three, when I square it, it's really close to nine, and nine minus nine is zero. And similarly, if this x is close to three, three minus three is zero, so I kinda of get zero over zero. Um, and I'm like, zero over zero, like I don't understand what that means. What could that answer possibly be? But as you learned in Math 251, there's a more sophisticated way to approach this problem where you don't get zero over zero as your answer. What you instead do is you recognize that that limit is equivalent to this limit, x plus three times x minus three over x minus three. And that's true because x squared minus nine just factors this way. And then we have these limit laws that tell us that we are allowed to cancel out these x minus threes here. So that tells us that this limit is really the same as the limit as x approaches three from the positive side of x plus three. And that's a little bit subtle. This expression is not equal to this expression. These two things are different, but as long as you include these limit things out in front, these two things become equal. But without these limits, they're different. This is not the same as this. Don't believe me? Try changing all these x's into threes and you'll get zero over zero, which is undefined. Try changing all these x's into threes, you'll get six, which is defined. It doesn't evaluate to the same number for any value of x, therefore these expressions are not equal, but if you put limit out in front, they are equal. At any rate, this is a limit you can evaluate. Using kind of that same naive logic that I tried to use to evaluate this thing up here, but it didn't work up here because I got zero over zero as my answer, it does work down here. Change all the x's into threes, well, three plus three is six, and that's the value of this limit. This is the kind of problem that you did in Math 251. You evaluated limits this way. Well, what we're gonna do in Math 252 is we're gonna start out using something that looks very similar to this. The limit as x approaches three from the positive side, sure, why not? Of x squared minus nine, you're like, this is the exact same, right? But not over x minus three, maybe over x squared minus six x plus nine. 
Sure, why not? And you're like, this just looks like a math 251 question. I bet I could do it the same way. Let's see, try to change all my X's into threes. I get zero over zero. Oh, that's not gonna work. Oh, right, 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 I bet these things factor. I can say that this limit is equal to the limit as X approaches three from the positive side of X plus three times X minus three. Because this is a difference of squares, so it factors that way. And then thinking back to your pre-calculus days, maybe you can factor this trinomial here as X minus three times X minus three. Don't believe me, foil this out and make sure you get back to this answer. And then you can do something kind of similar you did here where you can say that this expression is not equal to x plus three over x minus three, but this whole expression with limit written in front is equal to the limit as x approaches three from the positive side <clears throat> of x plus three over x minus three. And you're like, oh, cool, okay, now I'm done. Now all I gotta do is change all the x's into threes like I did over here. Let's see what happens here. Three plus three is six. This is all working out fine. Three minus three is, uh-oh, that's zero. What's going on here? Was I supposed to go further? Like this is undefined. I remember from my earliest mathematical days that you can't divide by zero. So how do you evaluate limits like this? Well, the answer is in Math 251, you couldn't. You said this is undefined. We can't go any further because we can't divide by zero. But we're gonna need to be able to evaluate limits like this in Math 252. So what we wanna do is create an answer for what this is equal to. It's undefined as far as all the answers we have available to us right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make up a new answer. So what we have to do is think about what is really going on here. And what's really going on here is we have a fraction where the top is really close to six and the bottom is really close to zero. It's not equal to zero because we're not saying the X equals three. That's a common misconception with limits. We're not changing all the X's into threes. We're thinking about what would happen to this expression if the value of X got really, really close to three. And that ends up being the exact same as what happens when the X change into threes in this example, but not in all examples. There's a subtle difference there. We're not changing the X's into threes. We're thinking about what would happen if the X got infinitely close to three. Well, if this X were infinitely close to three, this would get infinitely close to six. So this limit equals six. That's the idea of what we're going for here. So what would happen if this X got infinitely close to three? Well, we need a refresher on fractions to answer that. If you have a number like the number six and you divide that number by a really, really, really small number. And when I say small here, I mean close to zero, a really small, let's say positive for now, number. And six isn't special. This is any constant number divided by a really, really, really small positive number. What ends up happening is you get a really, really large number. Don't believe me? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can get to this conclusion. You can draw pictures, you can show this graphically. You can think about what division means. Like I have six cookies and I am giving a bunch of people a really, really, really small positive fraction of a cookie. Think like a crumb. I have six cookies and I'm giving everyone a crumb. How many people can I give a crumb to? Well, you can give it to a lot of people because you're only giving each one a tiny little crumb. Okay, that's not working for you. Pull out a calculator. Grab your calculator, take a number like six, and divide it by a really, really, really small number. 0 0.0000001, and what comes out? A really, really large number. I don't know, what's that, 60 million, something like that? Doesn't matter. The point is, the smaller you make this number, the larger you make this number. Fractions have this behavior that when we take a constant number and we divide it by a really, really small number, the answer ends up being really, really, really big. The only thing we have to be careful of is the signs of these things. A positive divided by a positive is a positive, but if this were a positive divided by a negative, this would end up being a negative. So if you take your calculator and you ask your calculator, what is seven divided by negative 0.0000001, right? Some really, really small number. You get a really, really large negative number. Negative seven with 10 zeros after it is what the scientific notation is telling us here. If this all makes sense, then this is really easy to evaluate, right? What's going on here? Well, the X is getting really, really close to three, but it's a little bit bigger. So the top is getting really, really close to six, but the bottom is getting really, really close to zero, but it's slightly positive. Why is it slightly positive? Because I have a little bit more than three here and I'm only taking away three. I have three and one crumb, if you want the cookie example, and I'm taking away three cookies. What's left is that little crumb. I'm 3.0000001, Minus three is positive 0 0.0000001. The point is I have some number, I'm dividing by a really small positive value, I'm gonna get a really big positive value. How do I write that? How do you write really, really big? 
What we're going to write is an infinity sign. Note, this is not a number. This is a concept here. This is just meant to represent the behavior of this limit. This isn't a number that we're going to have to deal with throughout this class. It's a concept that we want to understand. It's no longer sufficient to just say that this is undefined. I want information about how it is undefined. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this symbol for this purpose to describe the behavior of this limit. The answer is infinity. Oh, right, because in this section, the answer is infinity. I guess I didn't even have to do the work. I automatically knew the answer was infinity. Well, not quite, but almost. What if I ask the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative side of this exact same expression? Right, you go through and you do the exact same work, maybe dot, 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 and what you would get is this is the limit as x approaches 3 from the negative side of x plus 3 over x minus 3. And then think about what's happening here. Now I'm really, really close to 3, but slightly less than it. So 2.99999 if you want to think about it that way. So almost 3, but slightly less plus 3 is almost 6. The top is still getting really, really close, infinitely close to this number 6. The top still is not interesting. The bottom is still the part that is interesting. Now I have slightly less than 3, and I'm taking away a full 3. Now I have 2.99999. Now I am a crumb short of 3 cookies. And I'm taking away three cookies. I'm negative. Right? I don't have enough to give away three cookies if I'm a crumb short of three. Okay, I'm, I won't do the cookie thing again for the rest of this class. Sorry, that's probably annoying. The point is, the bottom is now negative. I still have this six divided by zero idea. Although the bottom's not exactly zero, it's a number that's approaching zero, except now it's approaching from the negative side. So just like six over a small positive number is a big positive number, six over a small negative number is a big negative number because a positive divided by a negative, even if there are these weird negatives, is still a negative number. So how do I write a really, really large negative number? Well, it probably won't surprise you to hear that it looks a lot like this, except instead of the infinity symbol, it's gonna be negative infinity. So I guess I lied a little bit when I said the answer is always infinity. Maybe I should have said the answer is either positive or negative infinity, depending on the context of the problem.